Thank you. And thank you all for making time for me this evening. I'm here representing the Seaport Camptons Estuary Alliance, and I'm asking for your participation in an effort to investigate some of the flooding issues that are going on in Hampton. Uh, let me give you a little bit of background about uh, what we're doing and, and why we're doing it. Um, last summer, the Seaport Camptons Estuary Alliance, otherwise known as SHEA, held a series of three workshops in Hampton, primarily for residents to address some of the issues that have been raised regarding flooding. Uh, there were a lot of people who had come to us and various other organizations with a lot of questions about flooding issues, what to do about it, without having either answers or knowing the resources that they could go to to get those questions asked. So we held three workshops in June, July, and August. They were well attended with about 50 to 60 people at each of the workshops. Um, and it was a good start to the process. Um, we also applied for a grant from the Consensus Building Institute in Massachusetts to start the process of identifying flooding adaptation strategies that Hampton may want to consider. Um, and the first part of that project was to hire an outside consultant, a, uh, an outside planner, who helped us to develop a situation awareness. And that involved putting together a questionnaire that was distributed to residents around town to get their impressions of what was happening related to flooding, what, what they thought the causes were, what the impacts were in their neighborhoods <coughs> and on their properties, what they thought they could do about flooding, what they thought the town should do about flooding. Um, and it was really an interesting process and a, and a real eye-opener to find out what our townspeople, what our neighbors thought about, think about, uh, the flooding issues that they're experiencing. Um, the second portion of that process uh, that finished out phase one was to convene a group that we're calling CHAT, which is the Coastal Hazards Adaptation Team. And CHAT is comprised of members of the Board of Selectmen, uh, the Planning Board, the Zoning Board, uh, the Hampton Beach Area Commission, and the Hampton Beach Village Precinct. We also have a representative of the Department of Public Works um, and the town planner as part of CHAT. And what we're in the process of doing is further investigating the causes of flooding, the various adaptation strategies that might be available in the town of Hampton, looking at the funding that might be required to implement those, um, those different strategies and where that funding may come from, and also the the implementation, implementation process should the town choose to adapt some of those implementation strategies. We've just gotten started. We, we just had our second meeting this afternoon. We expect this to be probably a year-long process. Uh, we think it would be of tremendous value to the chat process as well as to the town to have the budget committee represented as well in this process. Mm. Um, now, we currently have um, Regina Barnes on the Board of Selectmen who is their representative to the budget committee on, as part of CHAT, and also Bob Ladd from the precinct. Um, Village District. Please. I'm sorry, Village District Precinct, um, uh, representing them on the budget committee. So our thinking was you could choose to, and this is entirely up to you obviously, you mm -hmm. could choose to let them, assuming they continue to be their respective boards, uh, representative to the budget committee represent the budget committee as well in the chat process or choose to have somebody else be a part of that process but again <coughs> we think it would be a value for for the process mm -hmm. itself and for the budget committee as well as the town to have the budget committee represented so because we will be talking about <coughs> funding requirements uh, we don't know what is going to be needed to fund these various tactics. We don't know where that funding is going to come from, although we will be investigating that. Uh, we don't know how much of it may come from the federal government, how much mm -hmm. of it may come from the state, how much of it would come from the town. Um, we think you would want to be aware of that as we go through mm -hmm. this process. So that's my request. We meet roughly once every month, once every two months. Um, and I think it's a good team. Um, and I think it's a team that's energized and is interested in helping the town find solutions to what we're learning is an increasing and uh, an increasing problem dealing with coastal flooding issues. And I don't know if, if Regina or Bob, if you have anything to add to that. Well, I just say we, as the village district, we totally endorse 
this group and it, what it's trying to accomplish. And Jay's pretty well laid out its mission statement. So the uh, representation from the budget committee that's for the Chad activity? Chad, right. Chad, is it Chad or Chad? C H A T. T. Chad, okay. Coastal Hazard Adaptation Team. So you'll be looking for a chatter from the budget committee then? So to speak. <laughs> There's a lot of chatters on this committee. <laughs> Any uh, questions uh, on this topic from anybody? Uh, yeah. uh, Jerry. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Did we have a warrant article in the zoning, uh, brought up by the zoning board to raise the houses up a foot or more if they wish, uh, if they're living in a marsh area, if you supposedly mm -hmm. in whatever areas have been identified. So there's an action that's there on the ballot this March. Right. Uh, does, and then we have a warrant article or two to deal with studying a flooding on Kings Highway or one other area as well. Uh, yes. How does that meld into what you? Um, that is a part of the process. Jen Hale from the Department of Public Works is part of the chat team. Um, they are in the early stages of doing the, that research um, through the two engineering firms that they contracted uh, via that warrant article. Um, so you'll be incorporating their findings or their research into your so they're, you want to duplicate that effort? No, definitely not. And, and what they're doing is they're looking pretty much at two specific neighborhoods. Yeah. They're looking at Green Gentian and the drainage issues that they're having in that area. And they're looking down at Hobson, Manchester, the backside of Ashworth Avenue to look at the flooding in, in those areas. I see. We're going to be looking in, at those areas as well as the beach and the town as a whole. Yeah. We certainly need a, a good plan for that. I mean, we, you know, flooding... Is, you know, we get weather changing, we get tidal change, water changing, and then mm -hmm. there's an argument about how high the water is going to go. And I've heard two feet or three feet over 50 years, and I've heard two or three times that over 50 years. So uh, that has to be understood. There are different projections, and I think one of the things that we want to look at is if the town wants to adopt any of these adaptation strategies, what's the trigger point yeah. at which you say, okay, we have to go down that road? <coughs> Because you're right, we don't know exactly how high the water is going to rise or exactly when. There are projections, and there were projections that were issued as early as 2014, right. 2015, and, and, that's, that's and, and those are pretty accurate. Those are important. And those to, are being what you put your strategy in place on what to do as a sure. result of it. I mean, you got to you got to have. It's like it's us with, with the the ocean, the beach wall there is like 17 feet high, I mm -hmm. think, and the the wall we're thinking of eventually rebuilding by the the old lighthouse area, whatever it was, uh, the lifeguard station Coast or the Coast, Coast Guard station uh, was is going to be built that high too, I think, eventually uh, uh, when we do get around to rebuilding it. So is that enough? <laughs> Depends on how far you want to look. Uh, so, um, yeah, the Coastal, as we learned today, the Coastal Risks and Hazards Commission did some projections when that report first came out. They're going to be updating their projections probably by the end of this year. So we're going to have updated numbers on where we think well, sea level It's good is to have a, a global look at this in terms of how we're affected as a town. Really sure. Is because these, studying one area or the other doesn't really cover, cover the whole spectrum which we need to cover. So it sounds good. Thanks. It's, it's going to be an interesting process. It's going to be a challenging process, but we agree that one it's something we really need to be done. One that should be done fairly and accurately is in order to give the support of, of, of all. Sure. You know? And that's why we want to have all of these important boards and commissions and, and departments represented as part of CHAT. Thank you, Jay. Thank you. Anybody else? Bob? No, I, we have two members. We have three. Then we could break a tie. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? Mr. LaBranch. Well, there are only three people in this room that are going to be able to uh, volunteer for this. And it's myself, Mike Plouffe and Brian. Now, I know you two guys still work <laughs> during the day, so... Um, well, we work all the time, so Jerry and, and, day. Well, let, me, let me point out something to you, Steve. First of all, he's asking for a representative of the budget committee. It doesn't right. necessarily mean a budget committee member. He's asking the budget committee to select a person to represent the budget committee. We would like it to be a budget committee member. Yeah. Okay, and, and, sec I'll, and I'll second, volunteer. And secondly... Or, or a department representative on the budget committee. And, and secondly... Um, this budget committee terminates after this meeting, basically. Uh, we have a new budget committee uh, starting up next month, and it's probably best for that budget committee to decide. Uh, is, is there any reason why we should speed up that process, Jay? 
Um, it's your call. Um, no, there's there's not a real need for it. Okay. You know, like so. I said, Regina and Bob are, are mm -hmm. currently members of CHAT. Um, if you want to choose another representative, that's fine, and, and they, I'm sure, can bring that person up to speed. No, I think it makes a lot of sense to just wait for the new committee to decide who the reps will be. It'll probably be you ultimately anyway, but... <laughs> Whatever the case. I mean, are you meeting between now and the election? Um, no. There you go. It makes no sense to appoint someone now. <laughs> so, and we meet a, um, a week after the election, or rather the budget committee meets a week after the election, and presumably when they do the reorganization, they can decide on the representative at that time. When is your next meeting, Jay? It is... The 19th, I think. I think so. That's the night we meet. 19th that's that's the night we March. meet. Hmm. After the election, yeah. yeah we'll be meeting before you. <laughs> so, in that case, I would, again, volunteer as a member okay. of this budget yeah. committee. And then, uh, then when they meet on the 19th, if they decide to have somebody else do it, that's fine with me. But I would <laughs> like to be at that next meeting. And I'll miss it. Because you're going to have it during the day, right? Okay. It's at, uh, we usually meet at 3 o'clock. Yeah, do it, right? perfect. So, so we're looking there you go. So Mr. LeBranch wants to be the representative for one month. Mm -hmm. uh, is there any objection? I, I don't even have a problem making Mr. LeBranch a, the representative Well, you can deal now. with that next month. Um, well, that's what I'm talking about. No objection to making him the rep now no. for one month, no. right? Okay, so you are the representative. Thank you, Jay. Thanks, Thanks, Stephen. Stephen. Send, send me an email to remind me. You have my. And we'll make it official in March. You. <laughs> yes, so I'm, I'm there. So I'll know where to Just go. Kidding. You know exactly where the meeting is. And stuff. Steve, how close uh, are you on. to the marsh? <laughs> yeah, over, I'm very close to this so whole you, thing. So you, you, I have a uh, dressed. I have a dog in this. Some, uh, yeah, I have a dog. You're gonna hide in this thing. For sure. Is there a king moon on the 19th? He's, he's already he's already been moon. appointed, so it's not an issue. Thank you. The closer you are to the marsh. I, I, you all set. You all done, Steve? Anybody? Everybody all set now? Yeah, all set. Jay, I just want to make an observation, if I could. Um, <clears throat> I guess two observations. One is places around the world have been dealing with flooding for a long time, mm -hmm. like Amsterdam, for example, which has been under sea level for a long, long time. I hope someone is looking at how they've been able to manage being under sea level uh, for many decades, I think hundreds of years, actually. Um, so I hope they're looking at Amsterdam as a good example to, uh, to learn from. And the other issue I have is something that I raised at the Selectman's campaign, which was the dredging of the harbor. We want to dredge the harbor apparently only for commercial reasons, for shipping lanes. When in reality, we should also be acknowledging that that harbor is uh, a place to store that excess water. And the problem is that the harbor fills up with sand, and it's filling up with the sand faster than ever. And I believe one of the major reasons that that's filling up with sand is because they're narrowing the channel out to the ocean. And just like a garden hose, when you squeeze it, the same amount of water is going to come out, but it's going to come out you know, faster, more at a greater velocity. And it's going to carry anything there faster out with it. And that's what happens when you narrow the channel <coughs> in the Hampton River. You narrow that down. You're making the water go faster, both in and out. And it's carrying all that sand faster. And that's why I believe that the harbor is filling up faster than it has in the past. I think we should be looking at dredging the harbor, not just for commercial reasons, but also as a matter of flood control. So I just wanted to share that with you. That's good. I appreciate uh, that. I, um, That's a good input. I won't get into the causes of the sand infiltration in the harbor, but I, but I can tell you that we have discussed and, and looked at what impact dredging is going to have on flooding. Mm -hmm. And it's, gonna, it's not really going to have any impact because water is going to seek its own level regardless of how yeah. deep the harbor is. And as long as you've got the ocean at this level, um, if you make the harbor deeper, that doesn't mean the, the water in the harbor is going to be at this level. It's still going to be at the same level. You're just going to have more water. More water is going to come in through that opening. And it's wow, going to so you're saying harbor. that actually a deeper harbor would be more problematic? No, I'm, I'm saying that it's not going to have a material effect one way or the other huh. as far as flooding issues are concerned. Huh. Okay. So it wouldn't matter if we concreted the entire march, we still have the same play problem. No, that would be a real problem. Okay, so that <laughs> does have an impact. Then. Well, Somehow. that would have a real problem because the marsh absorbs water. It's like a giant sponge. And well, if you, you cement it, it over, then the you lose the entire harbor, which is not the marsh. Yeah, you need it would marsh. Not, not have any effect, you um, Relative to flooding. Marsh well, you'd in fact be creating a dam. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> exactly. Let's go.
right. which may be exactly what we need now. <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to pay for that? Okay. Any other questions for Jay? No. Thank you very much, Jay. Uh, I look forward to hearing from your reports from Steve and others. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Jay.